Okay, this time we're going to talk about something that will bring all these concepts together. The complex power phaser. And we write it as S. And I'm drawing these little lines on top just to make it clear that it's a phaser. Now you might get confused, didn't we already have a variable called S that's apparent power? This is different, but it's related. Like any phaser, it has a magnitude and it has an angle. And the magnitude is that S. And it has an angle of theta S. And theta s is just theta v minus theta i. So coming back all the way up from here, it's just the angle of that voltage phasor minus the angle of that current phasor. Our unit that we're going to measure it in is the same as the parent power. It's going to be volt amps. What makes it different than volt amps is that it is a phaser. Now we can write this in one of several ways. If you know what the apparent power is and you can figure out what the angle is, you can write it immediately like this. If you know what the voltage and current phasers are measured in volts and amps, You can write it like this, where unlike apparent power, these are both phasers. If you know what the phasers are, voltage and current in RMS, then since the RMS divides it by square root of two, square root of two times square root of two takes care of this one half. And you can do it like this too. This is RMS phasers. And then lastly, this is the first time every other phaser we've either drawn in rectangular coordinates or we've had, we've preferred to be either in rectangular or in polar coordinates. What you found is that impedances we prefer in rectangular coordinates and voltages and currents we prefer in polar coordinates. Complex power phaser means something when it's written in both polar coordinates up here, but also it means something if you write it in rectangular coordinates. And here's the crazy thing. This power here and this power here are the same thing. In other words, if you multiply if you find your complex power phaser, the real part is the average power, the magnitude is your parent power, the angle is the difference in angle between your voltage and your current. And that leaves just this one other weird thing that we haven't described yet, which is what is the imaginary part? And just to avoid having too many different colors going everywhere, I'll just color code it. That Q is called reactive power, and that's a new concept. Hey, sir. Yeah, shoot. Um, could you just remind me where we got uh, the VRMS and IRMS phasers as opposed to just uh, the scalars? Sure. The question is, is how do you get, how would you get RMS phasers? So, Let's say that the voltage across a load is equal to uh, three cosine of seven T plus 26 degrees. You could write, and that would be in volts. We could write that as a voltage in RMS form by just dividing it by the square root of two. And everything else stays the same, except now the units will be VRMS. Similarly, you can write, now getting to your question, Stone, about the phasers, you could write this as a phaser.
VRMS is related to the regular voltage phaser just by dividing it by the magnitude by square root of two. And then remember to change the units. Thumbs up.